Mass for Sunday, January 23rd. Hello again. Welcome to Emmanuel Church for the Deaf in Rochester, New York. I am Father Ray Fleming. And our deacon, Pat Graybill, has not yet returned home from visiting his family. So we pray that his flight may arrive safely. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Ordinary Time, January 23rd, 2022. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God's grace, peace, and strength be with you always, and with your spirit. We begin first by turning to God for His mercy, His eternal salvation, His support and aid for us as we pray together, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and grant us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate. He read out of the book from daybreak till midday, in the presence of the men, the women, and those children old enough to understand. All the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people, and as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it 
so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites, who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad, and do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods, and drink sweet drinks. and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened by this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Let the words of my mouth and the thought of my heart find favor before you. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, your words, Lord, are spirit and life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But, as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. 
the eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you, nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable we surround with greater honor and our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety whereas our more presentable parts do not need this but God has constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body, and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongue. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Not all prophets. Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us. I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew to write it down in an orderly sequence for you. Most excellent Theophilus so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and the news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all.
he came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read, and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, so that the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Bible readings were very interesting. First, Nehemiah explained how people used to worship with the lector reciting from scrolls while they all stood. It's very similar to what we saw in the gospel today. You know, our hearing deacon, Brian McNulty, he explained to me that Jesus, he didn't like that. Jesus is the only person that can deliver the homily in one sentence. The rest of us, we need to use more than just one sentence. Our second reading, St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, He starts comparing us to Jesus using various parts of the body, their functions, all working together to become one body. The many gifts, but one body. Then, at the end, St. Paul made an interesting statement. You are Christ's body. Before it was a comparison, but now it is clearly named. You are his body. So what's the challenge in that? It's knowing what to do, how to live. And Luke speaks to that. You have to bring food and supplies to the poor. Bring freedom to the persecuted. Help the blind to see again. Uplift the oppressed. Spread God's mercy. The challenge for us today is to recognize the many people that need God's mercy. 
We need God's blessing. So how can we give that gift? We must first believe that God is within us. That's called baptism. In the same way that Jesus went through the baptism, we are baptized and anointed with oil. Like the prophets, the kings, priests, we are anointed to become the body of Christ and bring the gospel to the world. The challenge. You know, sometimes I get up in the morning, I'm groggy, I need my coffee, I grumble. Where is the good news in that? Sometimes I meet people and we instantly butt heads and argue. Where is the gospel? If we are like Jesus, we must examine our connection to other people. But if we really are Christ's body, then we must ask a different question. How do I become God's blessing to the world? January, it's so cold here in the Northeast. We pray our hearts become warm with love for one another. We pray that that fire never extinguishes and burns forever within us. Then the gospel of God's love spreads through us. Amen. Let us pray. We pray our world finds peace and the ill become healthy. That those at war may settle their disputes and learn to love one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray our church continues to be the example of God's love, His power. When we are weak, it shows us His strength. The church reminds us to depend on God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. During this time of COVID, we pray for those that are ill. And we pray for those that care for the ill. Sharing the gift of health and God's love. We pray also that in this time of sickness may help us to be better connected to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For those that have passed, we remember in our hearts. We pray also for those that are heartbroken and grieving, that they may find comfort. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. God, help us to never forget that we are your son's body. Help us to always follow in Christ's way 
here on earth until we arrive in heaven united with you forever through Christ our Lord Amen Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wipe away our mistakes and forgive us our sins. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit for us salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, 
Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Now we proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the way 
that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us new life, we may always glory in your gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go now with peace. Thanks be to God.